says is the ruler of this world or this worldly system. So this last section is a call for us to walk in victory. We have a charge now to stand strong in the power of the Lord's might. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places, so we have a charge to stand strong in the power of His might, and so that we we need to be able to we need to be able to stand against uh, the devil and the spiritual host. Peter, in one of the Peters, I can't remember which it is. Peter warns us that 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 we have to be on the lookout for our enemy who's who's uh, 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 creeping around like a lion looking for prey. We need to be able, we careful and look out for him and watch out for him. Uh, it also says in, in one of the Peters, I can't remember which one, that we are to resist our enemy, resist the devil, and if we resist him, that he will flee. If we resist him, our enemy will run away. So today we want to talk about the, the equipment that God has given us that will allow us to stand and resist the enemy. And Paul encourages us to put on what he calls the whole arm of God. And we're going to talk about that today. Uh, this, this arm includes such elements as, as truth, as righteousness, includes the gospel, includes faith, includes salvation, it includes uh, the word of God, and it includes prayer. So this is, all, this is all equipment God has given us so that we're able to withstand and in some instances going to attack against our enemy. So let's start by reading uh, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 through 17. And Johnny, I'd like to ask you to read this for me. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Okay, okay, so, so now Paul, <clears throat> Paul knows from his own experience, we've, we've talked about Paul enough in the last couple of years to know that, that Paul realizes that he is in a war, in a spiritual war, and he realizes who his enemy is, that is Satan, this is the devil, and he knows, as we do, that Satan will fight against everything that God has done by Jesus Christ. He'll fight against the, the, the church. He, he will work as hard as he can to destroy God's work. Uh, and so and now, you know, now that 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 uh, uh, Paul is writing to the Ephesians and, and, and us, the, that, that now is the time we should be able to enjoy the unity and the peace that we have through Christ Jesus. But the devil wants to try, continues to try to destroy that. Uh, so that our lives are not peaceful together, it wants us in uproar, and doubt, and confusion. Uh, and but 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 Paul encourages us that we need to stand firm in our belief, and stand firm in our faith, stand firm in knowing that 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 we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. I want to keep bringing that up because it's important. That we, he wants us to understand that we, we've seated in Christ in heavenly places and that we should stand firm. Now, we, we, what's important to know, though, is we cannot, we as individuals, as people, have no, cannot stand firm against the devil. We don't have the power. We can't beat him on our own. However, if we stand in the power of God, we have the Holy Spirit in us. 
if we stand in the power of God, we can stand and fight. So we got to be strong in the Lord. We, we can't make ourselves strong. Okay. God has to give us the strength, uh, and he has to continue to, to, to pour into us. And you know, after we talked about in the past, I mentioned in the past, about being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's a constant filling. Uh, so so it's a, we're indwelt one time, but we're filled constantly. So we God continues to give us the strength to stand firm. Now Paul says, if you're reading this, remember Paul says we, we have to stand in the Lord, not by the Lord. Now by the Lord is true, it's true, but the strength comes from being united with Jesus. So the strength comes, our strength comes from being in Christ. Our strength comes because we have the Holy Spirit that's dwelt in us. We cannot stand on our own. And and to point that out, I would like, Sarah, if you would go to uh, the book of John and, uh, and read... Uh, Verses 1 through 5 of John 15. This is an example of what, of why we need to stand and be in Christ. John 15, 1 through 5, please. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless you abide, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. Okay, so what it says is, apart from Jesus, we can't do anything. We can talk a lot. We can make a lot of noise. But apart from Jesus, we can't do anything. So the strength that we have is in his power. The strength that we have is in the power of Jesus. In the strength of his great power, that's how we're able to do whatever we can do. Now, Paul actually talks about power early on in Ephesians, uh, back in Ephesians 1, uh, Kimberly. If you'd go back for me. In, read in Ephesians 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, <laughs> verses 19 and 20. Okay. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead defeated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Okay, so so Paul actually kind of uses very similar words in this section we just read. If you'd go now, Kimberly, to a, a verse we read earlier in ch chapter 6, verse 10, and we'll see he's used some of the same words here. Chapter 6, verse 10. A final word. Strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Okay, all right, so so what he's saying then is that the power that he mentioned in one and the power that he mentioned in, in chapter one and the power he mentioned in, in, in chapter six, he talks about power and strength and might, and it's the same kind of power he's talking about here is the same kind of power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in in the place of honor at God's right hand. So the same kind of power is the kind of power that Paul is saying that, that, that we must we need to be strong in because we are in a war against Satan. Uh, and, uh, uh, but God has given us armor to protect us in this war so that we can stand against the attacks of of the enemy. Now Paul uses a uh, Paul uses the something he sees every day. Remember Paul is remember we said earlier on Paul was in prison when he wrote this, right? And so when he was in prison, we know that he was chained for much of the time to a Roman soldier. So he would have seen 
the soldier's armor. So when he describes uh, the um, armor of God, he's using the, the pi word picture that he uses is the same as a soldier's armor. The difference is he's also say, saying that he's, so he's using as a word picture that, that he says that our weapons though, for war are not the same kind of weapons that the soldier would use. Our weapons are weapons of the spirit because our enemy is not uh, flesh, it's not a man, it's not man. Our enemy is the devil. Our enemy is Satan. Uh, so this war is different from a war with weapons like swords and guns because it's not against people. This war is not against people Though, though we know that, that, that our enemy uses people for certain things against us, but the war is not against people. It's against spiritual forces, as we just read. Uh, the, the, the spirit, and these spiritual forces are in a world that we can't see. We cannot see the, our enemy. We, we're not fighting against a human army. We're fighting against powers of the dark world. Because what Paul describes, we're fighting against rulers, authorities, and evil spiritual forces in the heavens. So now these forces do use people for the evil work, but the war is against the devil and his armies, and these are spiritual, so our weapons have to be different. Uh, um, to, to make the point, uh, back in, in Ephesians 2, verse to uh, Jeanette, if you'd go back to find to that uh, Ephesians 2 verse 2 and it describes who our enemy is. Ephesians 2 verse 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rule of the kingdom of the air. Is now at work in those who are disobedient. Okay, so so what he's saying, what he's saying is is the uh, 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 like like the rest of the world that the commander with the, who we're fighting against the commander is is the, uh, is the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, spiritual world. He's talking about Satan. He's the head of all demonic spirits. Uh, we cannot see them, but we know that they are working. In this world, we know that they're real, and we know they're working, and we know that because Jesus fought against them when he was on the earth, uh, and he won. See, the, the thing we can rejoice in is Jesus won, so uh, if I command on one, if we follow him, then we can also win. Uh, uh, Trudy, since you're there, would you read uh, in, in the book of Colossians? In the New Testament book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, we'll see what, what Jesus did to these spiritual enemies. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Colossians. Wait a minute. Okay. Just a minute, Pastor. All right. John, you said Colossians. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. It's the bottom. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your No, sins. no, 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 that's not, that's not it. That's not it. Let, let, let me read this. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. It, uh, it says, uh, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross. In this way, this is what Jesus did on the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. 
he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So Jesus defeated 41 against the evil forces that we are fighting. Uh, uh, now we've got to continue the fight. Now what he's talking about in Colossians, what Paul is talking about, he's not talking about uh, human rulers. He's talking about, he refers to the world ru ru rulers. Now that's a world system, but he's not talking about human beings. Do you remember in our study of Daniel? Do you remember when Daniel prayed and Gabriel came and he said it was delayed? He actually had to fight against a spiritual force. Um, uh, okay. Uh, 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 Trudy, I'll come back to you in a second. Kimberly, would, would you read uh, in the book of Daniel, or if your mother's there, is you or your mom in the book of Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 Daniel 10 12 and 13 Okay, so all right, so so th these rulers, uh, world rulers, uh, are not human rulers. So so this gives an example of who these spiritual rulers are. That that, that was a prince of Persia, uh, that there was, that, that was a prince of Greece. So so there are uh, there are spiritual forces that have influence over geographic areas. Or countries, and these are the rulers, the world rulers Paul is talking about, that are our enemies. Um, and so we're talking about rulers, spiritual rulers of the world system, not not human beings, though they work through human beings. And the chief ruler, the head of the, the head of this gang, <laughs> is is Satan. And, so, and, and, and Paul and Jesus actually described Satan as the ruler of this world, meaning the world system. Jesus referred to him as that, as this, and so uh, uh, does Paul. Uh, so so let, me, let me go back to you, Trudy, in the book of John. Book of John. Uh, and and if first I want you to read in John chapter twelve, verse thirty one. John twelve, verse thirty one. Okay. Okay, Jeanette, Jeanette, read it for me. 1231 and then 1430. And read John twelve thirty one only. Thirty one. Now acknowledge his time. Now, when I am lifted up. 
No. Okay, J uh, Jeanette, Jeanette, do me a favor. J J Jeanette, oh, Tootie, hold off. Jeanette, read, huh? read John okay. twelve thirty one. Okay. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Okay. Okay. Now also go to John fourteen chapter thirty. Uh, John chapter fourteen verse thirty. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. Okay, so the point, I, the point I'm trying to make here still is that, that I, what we have to re realize and recognize is that our battle is against spiritual forces. It's not against human beings. And, and, and the ruler of the, the, the head of our enemy is Satan. Uh, and uh, Paul actually calls him the God of this age. It's small, it's a small little G. God, Paul calls him the God of this age. So that's who we're fighting against. These spiritual forces are fighting against us, Christians. So the point is, if you don't think you are in a war and that you have an enemy, you will be defeated and you will be wounded and you will be hurt. So it's important for us to know that we are in a battle, and so that we have to be aware of that. And the point that think what Paul is talking about here in this part of Ephesians is that God has given us, and He tells us to wear this armor that God has given us. Then we can stand against the enemy. We can stand against the devil's attacks. He will not be able to knock us out the box. Now, it's, it's, it, Paul describes an entire suit of armor. It's an entire suit of armor. And again, the picture that he, the word picture that he's, he's painting is one that he sees every day because that he sees this Roman soldier that's all ready for battle every day. And this is the, we need to put on this, this spiritual armor and be protected and be ready to fight in the same way that this Roman soldier or soldier is ready to fight. If we can put it in in, in, our, in our terms today, if we if you're in the military, you equip you have certain kind of equipment that protects you. It's the same same idea. Uh, you're protected when you're be, be ready to go out to war, so that you can fight against the enemy and to stand against them. Now, it's it's significant. It's significant that the suit of armor Paul is talking about. Uh, it's important for us to understand that, that in the Old Testament there are some references that we know these are, are, are descriptive and, and allegorical, but there are, in the Old Testament there are, there's a couple uh, uh, places where it, God himself wears things like armor when he fights. Uh, Johnny, if you can, can find for me quickly Isaiah chapter 59 verse 17. Okay, so so this is Isaiah describing <coughs> describing God, right? Describing God as, as 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 having armor when he fights. Again, we know this is spiritual. It's a spiritual war. So uh, the same kind of protection God has for Himself, He's provided for us. He's given us the same stuff so to to help us in our war against. Satan, so we can stand against him. So now let's start looking at the armor itself. Uh, Sarah, just one verse. Read uh, Ephesians 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your weight waste with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness okay thanks okay so the first thing that Paul describes okay as a part of the army is the belt 
That's the first thing he described. And, and so the belt keeps everything in place. Every, all, all the clothes underneath have to be kept in place by the belt. Uh, so that's put on the under, un, undergarments. And then once that's put on, the belt is tied around, then the soldier can put on the other stuff. And the belt will hold everything in place. Then we're ready for action. So the truth is what holds everything in, pl in place. Truth can be everything or is everything that God has told us about himself and about his son Jesus and about the Holy Spirit. So that's the truth. Everything God has told us about himself is truth. And what did Jesus say happens when we know the truth? What did Jesus say when we know the truth, what did Jesus say happens? Anybody can answer that. Huh? Well, he, right, that's right. Jesus said when you, if you know the truth, the truth is what set us free. Because and the truth and, and the Bible talks about truth being internal. The Bible talks about truth being internal. In our inner parts. Uh, um, uh, let me read it. So, in Psalms 51 verse 6. Psalms 51 verse 6 says. Behold you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. So truth is, truth is very important. If we know the truth. And we know it internally. Uh, uh, it will be okay, right? If we're not right inside, if we're not right internally, we don't feel right, we can't win. We're going to be defeated. We're going to be hurt in this war. We don't have any inner peace. So the truth is very important as we, as we put on this armor to keep everything in place. We got to have the truth. The truth, and again, the truth is in the Word of God. The truth is what God has said about himself, about his son Jesus, and about the Holy Spirit. So we got the truth, put it, put everything in place. The second piece of armor that, that, that Sir read is the breastplate of righteousness. Now this breastplate of righteousness is God's own righteousness. It's God's own Righteousness. Remember, we just read Johnny just read that that scripture in Isaiah uh, fifty nine seventeen, where God said He put on righteousness as His body armor and placed the helmet of salvation. So it's God's righteousness that this that is this breastplate. God puts and God puts that on us Himself. God Himself puts that on us. If we go if we go to the book of Romans chapter three, Romans chapter three. Verses Okay, so 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 now we got the, the 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 belt of truth, this breastplate of righteousness. This all part of the armor. Now, this breastplate of righteousness is our justification. It's what makes us right with God. It's like we never sinned. You know, it's it, 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 it's it's the goodness inside of us, but it's God's righteousness, not our, not our own. Just like a soldier, we wear the breastplate of righteousness at the front. Of the body, it's, it's, it covers our front, uh, and and we got to make sure there's no holes in it. You know, breastplate uh, it isn't much good when it does when there's a hole in it, because the purpose for the armor is to stop the enemy, stop Satan, Satan from hurting us. Okay, so we got the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the third piece of armor is going to be in Ephesians 6, 
verse 15 and Mrs. Miller. Can you read that? And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Okay, all right, so, so the third piece of garment is for the feet or the shoes, right? And it says that you know, put, we, should, we should put on uh, on the peace that comes from the gospel of Christ so that we're fully prepared. That, that's, what we, that's what our shoes are, we stand on. So the, the, the gospel itself is like shoes. Now, keep this in mind. Paul is talking about the Roman soldier, right? So the shoes that are on the Roman soldier are like spikes. Uh, like, you know, if you've seen, seen, seen uh, uh, football players at cleats, the, the, the soles of, of the Roman soldier's shoes were that way so they could stand in one stand and be, and, 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 and be on solid ground. So, so the, uh, the, the gospel... It's what allows us to be on solid ground and be able to deliver the message of the good news of the gospel. So that's the third piece for our feet. Uh, and, and, and we should be always ready to talk to other people about Jesus. We should always be ready to deliver the good news of the gospel to be able to explain it. As I mentioned, the Roman soldier shoes, they were leather boots and they had, they, they, they gripped the ground to keep them firm and that's what we are able to do with the gospel. That keeps us from falling. The good news of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ keeps us from, from, from slipping and falling so that we can stand firm in this, in this war that we're in and we're able to tell others the good news of the gospel. Now we got we got to have the proper fit, which means we're going to need to understand the gospel so our shoes need to fit properly. They can't be too tight or too big. They have to fit right so that we need to understand the gospel. Again, going back to the word of God, we need to understand the word, and we're going to talk about that later on because that's part of our armor. So we got the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, so our front's covered. We got a, the right kind of shoes on so that we can stand. Next comes the shield. And Jan, uh, Jeanette, read uh, verse 16 of Ephesians 6. And in, in addition to, to this, all this, take up the shield of faith which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Okay, now, this shield, by the way, guys, is not this little thing that you've seen in the movies where, where you've got a, a person that's got this little shield and they can move it around and, and block the sword and that kind of thing. That, 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 that's okay, but that's not the kind of thing that Paul was talking about. The shield actually protects the rest of the armor that's on us. Now, uh, uh, the Greek word that Paul used for shield is the same word for door. So if you view a shield as being the size of a door, you'll see what Paul is talking about in terms of protection. The other part of this is that, is that, uh, uh, in those days, they, 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 would, they would light fire on the end of arrows and shoot them. So they actually, the, 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 the shield was actually covered with leather and it was wetted. It was damp. So what would happen is if an arrow hit it, it would go out, right? So, so, so Paul says, put on hold of the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Well, one, it would block it, but the shield was covered with leather that was damp, and they would put the fire out quickly. The other thing about the shield that's significant is that uh, what the Roman soldiers would do when they would go out to battle, they would be in battle formation. They would put their shields up around themselves and over themselves, so they were completely covered. So if you view if you view the church 
as you would a, a regiment of Roman soldiers with the shields, it's impenetrable with regard to the, the fiery darts of the enemy. You, you kind of get the word picture here that Paul's talking about? And God's provided all of this stuff for us because the enemy will try to use these arrows to destroy our faith, right? Got, right. So, 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 you got the word picture. Word picture. Now, uh, uh, God Himself says He's a shield for us too. Um, um, Proverbs, uh, Sarah, go, go to if you would go to Proverbs chapter thirty, verse five, quickly for me, if you would. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Okay, and then Psalms 3.3. 3. Sarah, okay. <laughs> but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my of my head. Okay, so, so the shield we're talking about, the shield of faith, we're talking about uh, 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 the God himself uh, is a shield for us as well. So we we we, we you got to use the shield of faith, which is which is our trust in God, and and again picture it as a door that size that that size and damp, so it puts out the puts out the the the, the fire from the door. So we can see what, what what Paul is saying. The next piece of the armor is our helmet. Our head, now, now we haven't talked about anything. Our head needs to be protected. So, uh, uh, Ghani, chapter, uh, verse 17 of Ephesians 6. 17? Yes. Mm -hmm. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so we took the helmet now. The helmet, the helmet is, helmet is, our knowledge that we are saved. We know that God has saved us by the love of Christ. We know that. that, that that's a gift from God. Uh, we know that we're saved. We know that the gifts of salvation, uh, we, we, we saved from sin, because uh, it says that, that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of, of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So we, we, our head, our mind, is protected because we know that we are saved. You know, we've been rescued from sin in the past. Uh, God saves us, as, and as we've talked about in this in this series, that I, the sermon series, we're saved from the power of sin, and uh, eventually we're going to be saved, free free from sin in the future with the existence of sin when Christ returns, or we're with Him. Uh, we're going to be saved from the, even the existence of sin. So, so uh, that knowledge is like wearing a hard hat. If we were in construction, that knowledge that knowledge keeps our head protected, so that we know that we are saved, and that protects us from all the the, the, the thoughts and the things we get from the from the enemy. That you're not worthy. The stuff you did in the past, you'll never be saved. You, you, you're a bad person. The knowledge, of, that knowledge that we have of salvation, protects us from that, because, because the, the the spiritual warfare that we in begins in the mind. So if we can, if our mind can right. be influenced, we can be defeated there. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, the last piece of the armor, the last piece of the armor, is the only offensive weapon in it. And that's the sword uh, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Re Johnny, read 17 for me again. 617. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay, so that's, that's, our, <coughs> that's our sword. That's our offensive weapon is the Word of God. That's the only piece of armor that we use or that a Roman soldier would use for attack. Everything else is for protection. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, our shoes, the shield, 
the helmet, all that stuff is for protection. Uh, but the, and the only thing that we use for attack is the word of God. Because the word of God is like a sword. Um, uh, Jeanette, go, if you go to Hebrews, okay. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 12. I'm oh, sorry, chapter 4. Okay, here I am. All right, here we go. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Okay, so there it is. The word of God is a sword. That's that's what we use to attack our enemy. When the, when 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 Satan attacks us, we can then use you know one we got all this protection, but the, we can then use our weapon. Now, what's the what's the greatest example in Scripture that we know of of the word of God being used as a weapon to fend off the devil? Okay, what, what, what's the best example we have from Scripture of the Word of God being used by anybody to fend off an attack or temptations from the devil? Jesus, the Word of God. Right. Said it is written. Absolutely, absolutely. Jesus himself said it is written. When he said it is written, he's talking about stuff he was talking about was Scripture. And it was Old Testament stuff yeah. at the time. So, that when Satan attacks us, then the weapon we use to counterattack is the Word of God. It's scripture because we just we just read it that the, the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. So we have a weapon that we can use to go on the attack when necessary. You know, we don't go on attack all of the time because we've got this protection the, the, the scriptures tell us uh, it's, it's, it's in Peter said resist the devil and he'll flee so we don't always have to go on attack but we can resist the devil and he can flee but when necessary to counter attack when necessary when you've been bombarded by all of these thoughts and all of this stuff and you're not good and 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 all of this stuff is going to happen to you uh, with COVID-19 you're going to get sick you're going to, you lost your job, you're going to be broke, you're going to, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to, 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 to pay your rent, not going to pay, pay to take your mortgage. Well, then we go into the counterattack and use the word of God. We find a scripture that, that counterbalances that, that, that defeats that thought. That defeats, we need to hold the word of God in our mind. That's why it's important that we know and study the word of God. I'm not real good at memorization. Those of you that are, it's a great thing if you can memorize scripture. And I'm able to recall scripture, but I can't memorize. I'm not good at memorization to do it directly. But those of you who can, that's a wonderful thing, wonderful gift that God has given you because you can then be very effective in your fight and battle against Satan. The, Bible, the scriptures tell us in Psalms 119, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we need to hold the word of God in our mind. So now we've talked about the armor. Any questions or comments about the armor? Okay, so now, now that we have the armor on, and and we need to, to figuratively maybe even do it every morning. I, I used to do it. I need to make, go back doing it uh uh, to imagine putting your armor on when you get up in the morning so I'm ready to go out and fight against Satan. Uh, but now that we have the armor on so that we can stand, we do also need something else. We got the armor on, but there's something else we need. And uh, and let's, let's see. Is Trudy still there? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. If, if she, you got you got Ephesians six. Yes. Okay. Read verses eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching therefore with all preparation and supplication for all saints, and for me the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bond, that therefore in therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so now, standing strong when the armor we've got, right? Standing strong also requires prayer. Standing firm also requires prayer. Not just for ourselves, but as Paul talks about, for all Christians. Not just for ourselves, but for all Christians. Remember now, we're in a body. We're in a unified body, right? And uh, we're all together unified, so we should not, we should pray for ourselves for sure, but we should pray for all Christians. And Paul, Paul actually asked for prayer so that he could be a bold ambassador even while he was in jail. So as we put on the armor, we need to pray. We need to pray all the time, we need to pray about everything that happens. We should pray at all times. Uh, we should pray, you know, we should, uh, we should actually have lives of prayer. You know, uh, 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 we should, should, should be constantly praying about anything and about everything. Because, you know, we can, ask, we can ask God for anything, right? So, so, so we, we should, our prayer should be all kind of. Now we got to understand if we know the word of God. We talked about the, <laughs> the sword of the spirit. We don't want to pray about things that are out that we know are outside of God's will because He won't do that. He will not answer those prayers if we know they're outside of God's will. Uh, then we're going against the part of the, the, the Lord's prayer that says, Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. So we, we can ask God for anything that we are sure it was in, is, uh, it's, it's in his, the, that's in his will, or if we don't know, we need to ask him whether somebody something is in his will or not, and then we can pray. So we can pray about anything unless it's something that we all know is outside the will of God. So we, we there's a lot, all, lot of kind of there's all kind of prayers. There's no there's no there's no specific formula for praying, even though Jesus gave us a model. Uh, there's no there's no specific posture for prayer, although we know that bowing in reverence is a good thing. But there's no rules for prayer. But we know that we need to pray about any and everything, not just for ourselves but also for other Christians. It's like Paul, and so Paul asked that people pray for himself, pray for him. And you know, I ask you to pray for me. You know, if you ask me to pray for you, I'm gonna pray for you. Uh, so the, the, those of you that I pray for all of the time. So uh, and so like Paul, I'm asking you to pray, pray for me so that I can do what it is that God has purpose for me to do and that I can, that I can know what it is. So, so just like Paul asked for prayer, we should not be afraid to ask each other for prayer. That's why when we do prayer requests, it's a good thing uh, uh, that, and that, 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 that we do pray for each other. It's a good thing that we ask for prayer. You know, there's some things we don't want to ask everybody for prayer, uh, that we want to have a prayer party, it's just me and that person. There's some things we want to limit the number of people uh, that, that know about our prayer requests, but we should always pray and not be afraid to ask others to pray for us because all of us, every Christian, is in a war against Satan. If you don't think that, if you don't believe you're in a war against Satan and you're a Christian, I guarantee you that you will be wounded and hurt. 
So you got to be aware of that, that you uh, uh, will not, <laughs> that you are in a war. And you and so be aware of, be aware of the armor that you have for protection. Be aware of the weapons that you use. But you also what's important is you must learn how to use the weapon that you have. Weapon doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to use it. If you got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, if you don't know how to use it, it doesn't do you any good. So we need to learn how to use the weapons that God has given us so the end of this at the end of the chapter is verses uh, 21 through 24 and i'll just read this real quick because it's just the, the end of the letter uh, ephesians 6 21 through 24 to bring you up to date uh, uh, tychicus i guess that's the way you pronounce it will give you a full report about what i'm doing and how i'm getting along he is a beloved brother and faithful helper in the lord's work I have sent him to you for this purpose to let you know how we're doing and to encourage you. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters, and may God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you love with faithfulness. May God's grace be eternally upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so Paul ends the letter by saying he's sending the letter, sending the letter by tick, uh, this guy, <laughs> and he will give him a full report about how Paul was doing. And remember, he's in prison at the time and paul ends this this letter kind of with the, the, what he did at the beginning he ends it with a prayer a prayer for peace uh for for his readers uh, uh a prayer for peace for love and faith and grace for all of those who love christ jesus but for all christians that he's writing to and for us so that ends our study on Ephesians. Any questions or comments? I hope that I hope that the that the study of this would one encourage you and be helpful to to you in uh, your walking relationship with 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 Jesus Christ. I know it has me even even though I've had this done the study three or four times. It uh, always helps me because I always learn more. Any other comments or questions? I have a question. Okay. Um, back, uh, back to Ephesians 6, um, 11, where it says, um, um, where it says that put on the full, full armor of God. I know that you explain like the, you know, the, like what truth is, righteousness, peace is, but how do you put, and I guess in a short, simple sentence, how would you, how do you put it on though? Okay. Like put on the armor of God. Is it, okay. is it I know how Okay. Let me tell you how I do it, and, and it, 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 it might work on work for you. Uh, you can, uh, in, in the morning, for example, in your in your quiet time, you can literally put it on. You can say, uh, uh, I'm, "I'm I'm putting on the belt of truth," and you can describe what truth is from the, from the word, and the breast breastplate of righteousness, and you can use the Roman scripture and the helmet of salvation. That's how I do it. So I can imagine, imagine, imagine yourself putting it on. Got it? On your body. On your right. Imagine yourself putting it on your body, right? But remember, it's spiritual. But imagine you imagine, imagine putting putting it on your body. I'm protected. My head is protected from all these thoughts uh, that, that come to my head because 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 I know I'm saved, right? Uh, I know that if, 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 I, if I come across somebody today that I can, can talk about the gospel of Christ with, I'm, I, I'm able to stand on firm ground because I got the, uh, my, my feet, I've got, on, I've got on the right kind of shoes today, right? Uh, and I've, I've, I've got the shield, I'm carrying with me the shield of faith because I know I'm going to get some temptations and things. So I've got it with me yeah. throughout the day. Does that help? So yeah, so imagine, imagine, uh, think about put, actually putting it on physically on your body. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, next week. Uh, any, any other questions? I won't cut anybody off. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Next, since we've ended Ephesians, <coughs> next week. <coughs> 
I thought about let's let's study the book because uh, we talk about the fruit of the spirit all the time. It the book of Galatians. How about if we start in the book of Galatians next week?